We are again, folks, Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. I'm trying my best to get through chapter 2 of Philippians. How can you get through when you're doing a, uh, a kind of a little bit of a verse study? Uh, I'm a word study person. I, I love to do word studies. I like to take, take the word. First word in chapter 2 is if. I like to take that word and look it up in the dictionary and see what it says. And it says that if is a probability word. If is the probability of whatever's behind it happening. Whatever is behind the if, the if is the probability of it. I like doing those kind of studies. And, and, and the word there, there's a word right there. And why is it there? It's there to tell you that you need to see what's going to be behind it. The reason, the reason if is there is if you read the rest of the verse, you'll find out why the if is there. And that's why the there is there, to tell you why the if is there, and to tell you that if therefore there be therefore any conclusion in uh, consolation, excuse me, in Christ. Uh, and, and then again, wow. After there is the B. Well, boy, what is a B there for? Because that's telling us a positive thing. That there will be. If you have these other things that we've read about, having the same uh, confidence, which uh, you saw in me, in Paul, then if you have that same confidence, now, if there will be in you, therefore, what is it there for? Isn't that good? That's a good question. What is it there for? That's what the therefore is. So that you'll see why. Either a positive or a negative. But therefore joins us in the mind to what the conclusion of the statement is. He said, therefore, any consolation. Wow. That is a humongous word. Consolation is the culmination of a matter or a thing. The culmination of it, the consolation of it. That's the matter of it. And then he says, in. I love that word. You know what that means? You know what in means? It means in. In means in. Wow. If where is the O in one? Where is the N in one? The N is in the middle. O N E in one. The N is in the middle. If there be in anything, anything the N in Christ, okay. How can you have consolation in Christ? You've got to live as He lived. You've got to see first how He lived what he said, and therefore, any of you that do that can have a consolation in Christ. And we should have been translated when we got saved. By the cons consolation or the culmination of salvation. Three o'clock in the morning, November 5th, 1972. I said, Lord, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. What did I do? That Bible said, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, there's the if, and I did, I will give you a consolation in Christ. And I got it. And I laid down the old man. And I took up this consolation which gave me the encouragement to continue that and follow Christ. Wow, what is that word, encouragement? That is a great word. Jesus was the great encourager. But don't you know it was an encouragement when he I gave the sight to the blind man? Don't you know it was an encouragement when he made the lame to walk? 
Don't you know it was an encouragement when he uh, raised that uh, woman's son that was in the casket? Don't you know it was an encouragement when he brought Lazarus out of the grave, showing us the first encouragement of a human being walking out in the flesh because he himself had walked out into the flesh too after death. So this was it. This was the encouragement. Wow. If you will study a word, if any comfort of love, comfort, what is comfort? Comfort is peace. Comfort is peace. Peace of mind, peace of heart, peace of soul, peace of body, peace in life, peace. When you disturb the peace of a family, a man and a wife, somehow, two people that love each other, been together for umpteen years, all of a sudden see themselves have grown cold, cold to each other and got indifferent and disturbed the peace that was in the house. Without peace, nothing's perfect. Even with peace, it's hard to maintain a perfection that you can live with comfortably every day. You have to understand it's not all about you. Especially you listen to Brother Peter, especially if you have children. One of you in that family has got to give. And when the second you give, the other one will give. The second you give, the other one will give. And you both, for the children's sake, lives live like two human beings should live peaceably with each other when you said I I take thee to be my wife or husband through thick through thin through sickness through hardships through toils through misling to through, through all of this I took you Now I'm going to throw you out. Now I'm going to disagree. Now I'm going to be unhappy. Now I'm going to let the devil ruin our life and our children's life and our little boys and girls will grow up totally misled and miss taught and miss everything and miss the family life and miss the good part and end up in this destructive, miserable, heart-aching, heart-breaking world because you two or one of you is too stinking stubborn to give in and say, look, let's start over. Go on a date. Go on a date. And take the kids. Depravity. Depravity. Depriving one or the other from the children. Using the children for battleground, ammunition. Children aren't bullets. They're children. Wow. Don't know how I got over here, but I'll tell you one thing. It sure does need it. It sure does need to be. I see it. It breaks my heart to see what I'm seeing today. Family after family after family. Wife saying, you ain't seeing these kids. I know that you love them more than you love me, but you ain't seeing them because I'm going to make sure you don't see them. Every time you come down, I'm going to put you in jail. I'm going to have the sheriff come after you. 
You ain't got no thought at all for that child? That you're going to send the sheriff over to their daddy? Or daddy, you're going to send the sheriff over to their mother? These children, are that's their, you are their parents. Wow. Man. How can you do anything that's in this book? Of Philippines. How can you call yourself a Christian? How can you do anything? Out of this book of Philippines. And be at war with your husband or your wife. You're not going to. <coughs> you are not going to. You are out of the realm of God. You are out of the blessing area. You are out of the. You are. You are outside of and you're outside the protection of God in a sense you're like a person that's never tithed a person that's never tithed has never come into the full blessing of God and will never come into the full blessing of God and have you ever seen somebody that's been to church 30 years and he, he's never changed he's the same He's just the same as he was 30 years ago. There's something wrong with that. That's a midget Christian. You, you need to grow. That you be like-minded in unity of mind. Oh, you said well, to that man or that woman when you got married, I will be in unity with mind with you. If I disagree with you, we'll talk it over. In a bedroom somewhere, not in front of the kids. Not in front of the children. Our differences won't be using these children as pry bars. Listen, you have got to shape up for your children's sake. For the church's sake. Do you know that you are hurting? You are hurting the church that you go to when you can't follow God's direction? And you can cause somebody to die and go to hell that's been watching you and been saying, Hey, I would like to be like her. I would like to be like him. And all of a sudden, here you come up looking like the devil. You've let the devil get in your heart. Let the devil get in your mind. Let the devil get in your life. You start seeing things that aren't true. You start debating about things that aren't true. Not true at all. Uh, the man thinking about something about his wife, well, it must be, she must have a boyfriend, or she must have this, or she must have that. And he's thinking, if it's the other way around, well, he must have a girlfriend, he must have that, he must have that. Whew. I tell you what, a few years back, say, we've been married 53 years, with my wife and I, 50 years back, when we left the house in the morning, and went to work. We drove off from the house. So we worked a job that worked 12, 18 hours a day. So I'd leave the house and I wouldn't be back for 12 or 18 hours. No telephone, no connection with each other, no nothing. But we had trust. We trusted that each other was doing what we said we'd do in our marriage vows. We trusted that. And we didn't break each other's trust by doing something outside of the marriage realm. You need to trust. Trust. What's today, what is broke, there is no trust. Uh, <laughs> do you know what? It's done got to the day now where you almost can't trust your bank. 
You say, why are you getting up in there like that, Brother Peter? I got a writing up there. I've got to have change down at the bottom and have it change black. I can't see red. The writing up there is in red. And I have to keep up where I am. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself no reputation took upon himself the form of a servant and was made unto likeness of men and being found in the fashion as of men he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross well seems I'm on the subject let me carry on Man, humble yourself. Get on your knees. Crawl up to that woman and say, Look, we've come too far to turn back. We've come too far to allow this anything, whatever it is, to destroy us. Woman, you need to get on your knees. And crawl up to that man and say, look, we've got children. That their life is going to be like destitute for them. We're going to break their little hearts if we continue to do what we're doing. We have got to not do what we're doing because we're breaking their hearts. And we're setting a precedent in their lives that they may have miserable, miserable lives because of what we're doing right now. I got news for you. When that little boy or that little girl gets 19 years old and slaps some woman around because of what he learned at home, because of his heartache and his heartbreak. And that little old girl becomes a prostitute. Because she said, hey, look, I ain't getting married. I seen my mom and dad ruin our life and ruin their life and ruin everything. There's hell on earth around our house. Now, I ain't going to have that. I'm just going to go out and be a prostitute. And I'll never get married. I'm just going to live with men. You're setting the precedent. You're setting it up. You're setting it up. You are right now. You are setting it up right now. What do you want to do? You want to eat a little crow? Get yourself back right. Go back to your vows that you said and re say them again. Walk down in front of the church and remarry. Recommit. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in this living world properly. Get in this world of Christ. Are you following God? How can you follow God and be at enmity with your husband? How can you follow God, man, and be in enmity with your wife? Why did this, this ex, this exaltation right here. Why did it end up being a marriage council class? I can tell you why. Because I can show you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can show you ten. Ten. Ten people in our church. In our church. I'm saying in our church. Who are supposed to be following God. And following the vow they made when they got married. I busted up or got problems or have had problems. I remarried or been married and got children that are out. In the in the out hanging on the side, got grown children that are. Uh, when you look at them, you look at them with wonder in their eyes. 
because they can't get stable because their parents did the same thing when they were young and now they're just all, all discombobulated. You say, have you got this in your family, Brother Peter? Yes, I have. I have it in three. Three. Three of my children. I have this problem. And three of my children. And my wife and I stayed together. And my wife and I did not fight in front of our children. If we did fight, I don't remember when we ever fought, but we must have. <clears throat> But we didn't fight in front of the children, I don't believe, if we did fight. And, and, but yet I even have children that have this problem. And, and, and I tell you who, it, I see it, I, it hurt. I see it hurt. It hurts the children. It hurts the children. So bad that they want to delay or put off or not get married at all. And it is such a problem that we've caused in America today that we've made this big D word an everyday word. I would rather see a person use the bad word damn than to use that word divorce. I think that they could probably, if they were saying a damn to each other, they could probably get back together and get through the thing. But when they say divorce, they're saying, I, I, I made a big mistake telling you I'd follow you until I die. Or live with you no matter what, whether you pick your nose and eat it or not. Or whatever you do that I don't like. Ain't it something that 20 years from now and your children are out here and they're a mess and you look back and say, man, I wish I had done different. Man, I wish I had ate some pro. Man, I wish I had stayed with my husband or my wife. Man, I wish I had worked this thing out. My heart hurts. My heart hurts for the children. My heart hurts for the man. My heart hurts for the woman. Because from this day forward, from this day forward until the day you die, there will never ever, not ever, be total satisfaction in your life. You won't have it. When you married that man, God was on the scene. When you made your vow, you made it to God and to the man. And man, you made it to God and the woman. You break that vow, you're breaking God's chain. And when you break God's chain, you've broke a link that you can't mend. You, you're either going to make that woman a harlot, a whoremonger, or you're going to make that man a whoremonger or a, a desolate person. You're going to make each other desolate in this world. You're going to make each other separated from a part of God you never, ever, never, ever, never, ever can fill that room again. There's a room in your heart when you marry that the only person can fill that room is that first one you marry. Be he good or be he bad. Be she good or be she bad. That's the only one. These children only have one mother or one father. Be he good or be he bad. Be he separated or be she separated they have a miserable life. They have broken hearts when they go to bed at night. They wake up with bad dreams. 
They, they cry and say, Mama, I want to see Daddy. I want to go see Daddy. I want to see Daddy. And your mama, oh, hateful, rotten, stinking, rotten, hateful mama, says, No, you ain't seeing him. That child doesn't have that hate in her heart you have in your heart. That child doesn't have that dagger you're sticking in him in their heart. And man, the same way. If you do opposite to that woman you married, that's the same problem. I think I'll probably go ahead and, and just designate this one uh, uh, and copy it and hand it around to, to some of you folks that could use it. You may not listen to it. You may listen to a bit of it and say, I ain't listening to that. Well, I got news for you. Don't listen to it. You have one hellish life. You go ahead. You go ahead. You go ahead. You go ahead and, and you go ahead and continue through with where you are. Uh, man, woman, boy, girl, or young ones, or old ones. You go ahead and continue where you are. I can show you the end of your life. You want me to show it to you? Come into the church and find some people that have been through it. And find some people that tell you they got a hole that's a never-ending hole. That when they get their mind on it, it continues down. It's a never-ending hole. It's like a black hole that sucks everything good into it. Because of a broken relationship. That when they got married, they said, for, for till death do us part. And they lied, they lied, they lied, they lied. They didn't mean what they said. I believe the average person, average now, that got married and said that meant it. They believed at that time they meant it. Whatever it was they had at that time, they need to get back. They need to get it back. If you can't sleep in the same bed, you could live under the same roof and be civil. You know what happens if you go to prison and you ain't civil? You get beat to death. You go to a prison house and live in a prison. You're going to get beat to death if you ain't civil. And what you're doing in your house when you're not civil to each other is you're beating your children to death. You're beating their little old hearts to death. They do not understand separation. Children do not understand separation. They cannot fathom it. It's too deep for them. It's too far down for them. It's too far down the scale. You know what it is? It's too close to hell. It's too close to hell. It, a lady, if you and your husband, or a husband, if you and your wife are making it hell on earth around your house, you need to stay together. And you need to change that fact. You need to be civil with each other. As civil as you would be somebody you just met. Would you meet somebody and treat them like whatever you're treating each other right now? Would you say the same things to another person you're saying to each other right now? There's a good chance if you said something you're saying to each other right now to somebody that you didn't know, they'd get a gun and shoot you. And I got news for you. That would probably be too good for you. If you're ruining your children's lives, if you're ruining your father's life, who's still alive, if you're ruining your mother's life, who's still alive, if you're ruining your, your, your in-laws, your father-in-law, your mother-in-laws, if you're ruining your grandmother, who's still alive, who knew that death till we part was something. You may have a grandmother live with an alcoholic grandfather until the day he died, beat her every day. 
but she didn't leave him. Ran off with other women, did all kinds of things, but she didn't leave him. You know why? She isn't a liar. She said to him, death do we part. She's not a liar. Hey, you, you people who are continuing on this road right now of separation are liars. You are the top of the heap. You're right at the top of the heap. You both are liars. Well, one of them says, well, I, it's not me. It's her that's decided. Oh, it's not me. It's him that decided. Well, you both have to get together and decide to not do what you're doing if you've got children. And, and live in the same house and be civil. And don't let them children know there's a problem. A, a, a child from any age until they're out of the house does not deserve to carry the heartache and the problem that a man and a woman have in strife with each other. Strife is enmity against God. It is op There's no strife in God. None. No strife in God. They, they struck Jesus, pulled his beard, spit on him, do everything. And he said, I forgive you. God have mercy on them. He said, have mercy on them. Well, my time's come and gone, and I've got to go now. And I will uh, see you some other time. If you'd like to talk with me, hunt me up, and we'll talk. All right. Bye.